That's scary. Mike in New Haven has my text, which could be very dangerous. I mean, that says he's texting me things now, which is scary. You know, you know, very scary. Uh, Paul in Hartford, Connecticut. What's up, Paul? Hey, Mike. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for 30 years. I grew up listening to you in my dad's truck, and now my kids are listening to you and mine. So, Well, thank you. Appreciate been, it. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you about the Mets. Yeah. Um, you know, I just don't understand... You know, I under, I knew they weren't going to get Stanton. I mean, but I, I don't no. understand. You know, they just don't ever make a splash. At least when Omar was here, he knew that you had to get a couple big ticket items to excite the fan base. And Sandy just seems tone deaf, if you ask me. I don't know. I, uh, they they have I, become very passive and very tone deaf. Now they're not trading Harvey. And they never should have, as I said the other day. You're not going to trade low. I said you don't sell a stock when it's ten dollars that you bought at fifty. So I mean, you just don't. You hope it comes back uh, if you believe there's anything there. And and the reason they're not trading him is, believe it or not, is that Callaway talked them out of it. Uh, they you told know, the, yeah, he told them he wanted him. He said I I I, I want a shot at this guy. Uh, and so did Dave yeah. Island. They said, oh, I, we want a shot at this guy, so they're not trading him, and they shouldn't because they'd get nothing for him. So he's better off taking a shot here. He's pitching for his life. He's pitching for his future employment. He's pitching for his contract. He's going to give you everything he possibly have. He's going to listen to these new coaches. He's going to not have a big attitude. This guy just worked with a uh, – these guys just – you know, Island – Okay, he's got a reputation. Mickey Callaway just worked with the Cy Young Award winner in the American League. Harvey is going to listen to him about what they can do together, and he's going to be more humble. And who knows? Maybe he get a year out of him. I mean, it's it's he's he's worth keeping this last year to see if you can get something out of him. Because the only way the Mets have a chance to be decent next year is if they get big years out of Syndergaard, Degrom, Harvey, and maybe even somebody else. I mean, that's the only chance they Agreed. have. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed, a hundred percent. But the thing is, you know, uh, coming down from Hartford, you know, I can only make it to probably between five to ten games mm-hmm. a year. And you know, they call me all the time to buy mini packs and right. this, that, and the other thing. And you know, I'm just not going to do that if they're not going to reinvest the money they I sold understand. off last year at the uh, end of the year. They are. They are. They just don't get it sometimes. And if I can tell them one thing now, is what I would tell them is, listen. No one's expecting you to do what the Yankees do. But when you treat your fans like they don't exist, and when you make jokes about Nemo's contract, when the Yankees sign Stanton and you think it's funny, the Met fans, that's a wound to them. It hurts them. It, it, they, they, they get embarrassed in their, when they meet their Yankee friends. They get embarrassed around a water cooler. They get embarrassed in the office because, you know, that it's, it's, like the, it's almost like the Mets aren't trying. And you've got to go out there. And you know what? If the Mets went out there and got a decent player, and put them in a position, at least it shows they're trying. That's all a Mets fan wants is somebody to try. They don't want them to compete with you. They don't expect them to get – nobody expected the Mets to get Stanton. That doesn't mean they can't go get D. Gordon or get Castro or get themselves some decent players. The Mets need to go out there and get one offensive player and put them in a lineup. I mean, that's the – you know, that's it. They, they have to try. Sometimes they just, they just seem to want to give up. Dwayne and Union, what's up, Dwayne? Hey, Mike, uh, just just a bittersweet you leaving us. Been listening to you since I was seventeen. Well, thank you, appreciate now. it. Thank you. So I thank you for that. And just real quick, I was going to talk Cowboys. Yeah, go ahead. But since you're on the Mets now, well, you can talk Cowboys uh, if you want. Go ahead. Okay, quick question for you: um, If the Cowboys somehow beat the Raiders, right, and then with Ezekiel Elliott coming back, right, and they beat Seattle, right. I had a disagreement with somebody this uh, today. Go ahead. Does the Eagles owe it to the NFL to play hard that last game against the Cowboys? No. To try to keep them out? No. I didn't think so either. They I don't. Mean, especially with them. They don't, the owe, they they don't them. owe anybody. Listen, I'll tell you what, the, what my theory on it is. If you are going to be eliminated, you're going home, you owe the league, you owe your fan base, and you owe your, 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 yourself the pride to go out there and play spoiler and try and win the game. If you are going forward, and especially if you're the Eagles who have just lost their key player, if you need to rest bodies 
then you rest the bodies. You, you try to win the game with whoever you're playing with that week, but if you need to rest right. key guys, well, then you rest the key guys, and that's it because you're going forward. You have every right to rest those key guys to get them ready for the playoffs. If you can't go up or down and you are locked into the two or locked into the one, you don't owe anybody anything that week. Absolutely nothing. You owe them nothing. But remember, there's different ways to play it. Some guys, it's good when they do that. Some teams, it's bad when they do that. So it's got to know you a team. You know, if you have if you have guys who are like desperately, they're walking wounded, they need a week off in the worst way, or they're not going to even be worth anything in the playoffs, then you don't play those guys that week. But if you can put a team on the field, then by all, like, if you're now, I'll give you an example. If you're the Eagles, Foles needs all the work he can get. Go out there and try and win that game with Foles. You need to build momentum and prove to your fan base and prove to your to your players, to your nucleus, that you can win with that man. So any game you can win with him is going to help you in the playoffs. I would, with Foles, go out. See, my first theory is that team owes you nothing. But let's get to what's right for them now. What's right for them is to play hard because they need to get Foles. Now, rest the guys. If you have a tight end who's hurt and he needs the week off, Give them off. If you have a wide receiver that needs the week off, give them off. Put the backup in, but play to win after that. And that's how I would do it. I think you need sometimes to get a lift going into the postseason. And sometimes it's the right week to do it and the right way to do it. And I think it depends. It always depends on your team. But I don't like resting. I don't like taking the week off. I don't mind resting a couple of key guys, but I want to still try and win the game. Mike in Philly, what's up, Mike? Mike, let me tell you, you're a legend. This is a dream come true for me. I, I did some radio and television work way back in the day. Huge fan of yours, Mike. I was supposed to be there on Sunday to meet you. I didn't make it. I tell you, I'm heartbroken. Going through a divorce, my wife and me always talk about you. I used to watch you. Thank you on the Yes Network, Mike. This is this is great to speak to you. Well, thank you, you are the best. Mike, I want to meet you one day. I want to ask you a big favor. How about I come up to the station on Friday? Could I come up and meet you? No. Not oh, Friday. I, Sorry. No one. I've had thousands. You have one ticket for Thursday, Mike? No one. Uh, t- Thursday? Yeah, one ticket. Mike, you stay on the myself. phone and Mons, you talk to Mons and, uh, about about coming up on Thursday. Mons will It'll talk to you. It'll be an honor, Mike. Okay. Really well Thursday you can come see the show. No one gets to see the show Friday. Thursday you can see the show. Uh, hold on. Uh, let Mons put you on. Put him on hold, Mons. And uh, you know what? Put him on hold, this guy. And we tell him we can, we can get him in that day. Get, get his number. We'll get him into the place Thursday. And we'll do that for him. Anthony in Middletown. What's up, Anthony? Hey, Mike. It's, uh, it's an absolute honor. I just want to say uh, I've learned a lot, you know, to, between sports and life, listening to you and Mike. So it's a complete honor over the years listening to you guys. Um, just one thing on the Mets real quick. Is it, is, it, is it wrong for me to think that the GM is is not – Pushing the ownership enough to you know go get a big time player. I don't believe like, that. I, listen, I, I don't like think any Minaya, GM. I don't think any GM wants to sit there and not because get players. I can players. see like a Minaya trying to like you know you know straddle the Will Ponds and, and try to convert, you know convert them into trying to get a big player. But I don't see Alderson even trying to make any type of push to do anything. He just gets his budget and that's it. You know. I think that they work together. I think that. Uh, they have a plan, but I do think that they're too low key about it. Omar always wanted to make a splash. Sandy should want to make a splash more because this is New York, and you need to make a splash sometimes. You do. You got to play that game. Why do you think the Yankees were out banging the drum yesterday? The Yankees not only introduced Stanton yesterday; they went on a tour yesterday. We didn't ask the Yankees for everybody yesterday. They they delivered everybody yesterday. Why? Because they were out selling yesterday. They were out selling their business. The Yankees are the Yankees, and they're still out pounding the pavement selling their product. That's why they're great. Because they care enough, and they work hard enough that they go out and pound the pavement. Hey, we just did something. Now let's go out and sell it. And that's exactly what they did yesterday. They went out and sold it to everybody. They want people to go put the Yankee tickets under their tree. They want the person to go out and buy the 27 jerseys. They want the person to go out and buy the Yankee cap. They want the person to go to Models and buy the Yankee jacket. They want you to think 
Yankee. That's why they're great. Bradley in Manhattan. What's up, Bradley? Hey, Mike, what's going on? I'm just like everybody else, man. I got to thank you for, you know, the 30 great years, and not just you, your staff, Mods, and McMahon, all of everybody out there. Thank you. Yeah, you guys have really done a great job. Uh, and you know what? You've, you've had such an influence with your words, especially with trying to get Piazza here and how much that worked and, you know, getting McIntyre's ass out of here. Uh, can you help us get – you know, somebody like Machado, somebody like that, like you're doing right now. You don't need you know, it. The Yankees really don't need it. Oh, the Mets. Yeah, the Mets, the Mets, Mets man. The Mets will not. Listen, the Mets, as they're constructed right now, you can only do so much. But I would tell them this. They desperately need to do, they need to get back in the game. They don't have to give their fan. you know, they don't have to put a, Mercedes Benz in the garage. They need, though, to put a car in the garage. They need to go get a player. And just to show that they have basically a pulse. Go prove the team. Show that you have a plan. Don't make snide remarks about it like it's something wrong that the Yankees are doing. When the Yankees go and get Giancarlo Stanton. All right, we understand that the Yankees are one of the few teams that can afford him. Understand that. Jeter knew that. That's the court of his last resort. He didn't want to give them to the Yankees. He had to. He had nowhere else to go. Dodgers couldn't afford him. Couldn't get him in. On, you know, they didn't have the money to give him, to give him right now. And the Yankees did. And the Yankees still were able to keep their, their way and do that and still stay under the luxury tax right now, which is something they've been you know, talking about with nonstop. And they say they're still going to do it. They're not blowing that up. Now, I still want to see that because, you know, one day they can wake up and all of a sudden we, oh, we decided, ah, what the heck, you know. We took the rubber band off. Now let's go. It's party time. So I always think they're one move away from that. But right now they are still talking about keeping the rubber band on at this time. Back after. 